Hello, my name is Dan Hall, and welcome to the very first episode of Calibration TV. Calibration TV is a web series dedicated to the community of calibration and metrology. So metrology, not to be confused with meteorology, is the science of measurement. And meteorology, obviously, is the study and science of weather in the atmosphere. So although there are some important measurements that are made in the meteorological community, we'll be talking about calibration and metrology on Calibration TV. What kind of things do I hope to show you uh, on an episode of Calibration TV? Let me go over a few ideas that I have. Product demonstrations. I think a lot of what we'll do is a uh, demonstration of new products showing you new features of new equipment that comes out and maybe some features of existing equipment that you may already have. Interviews with uh, manufacturing companies, service providers. Um, in fact, we've got three interviews in our very first episode here. Pleased to say that. I thought it might take longer to get into interviews, but um, we'll have three for you in this episode alone. Facility tours, uh, definitely hope to do some remote visits to some manufacturing companies. There are some amazing technologies uh, that take place in companies that manufacture calibration and test equipment, and I hope to be able to visit some of those facilities and bring some of those technologies to you on calibration TV episodes. Applications, we'll definitely talk about applications. There are, uh, calibration itself is kind of the comparison of two different measurement types, but places where calibration equipment is used or processes that use calibration equipment are very interesting so I hope to bring you some application specific information and in episodes. And lastly training. Uh, basic training, maybe calibration 101, principles of uh, the parameters that I generally work in are pressure, temperature, flow, humidity, dew point, uh, mass and weight, some electrical calibration as well but uh, definitely not opposed to branching out into some other uh, disciplines as well. So those are some ideas for Calibration TV episodes. So who am I? As I mentioned, my name is Dan Hall. I have my own company called Hall Associates, and I'm a manufacturer's representative specializing in calibration and test equipment. These are some of the companies that I represent. Uh, if you are involved in calibration and test, you probably recognize some of these logos and know a lot of the products behind them. Fluke Calibration is really composed of a number of smaller companies that they've uh, acquired over the years. Uh, DH Instruments, uh, Heart Scientific, Ruska, Pressurements, along with the Fluke Electrical Calibrators. Uh, but for 25 years, I've been working with end users and calibration labs, instrument shops to uh, help them with their calibration challenges. I'm also a bit of a video geek. Uh, I've always been interested in digital video. I work with several nonprofit organizations in my area on videography and uh, live streaming. So I thought it would be interesting to take these two things, uh, my interest in calibration and test and video, and combine them to put together a web series uh, like Calibration TV. So hopefully there's a few other people that would be interested in watching as well. So why don't we get started on our first episode. Uh, I actually had a, my first episode of Calibration TV all finished about a month ago. And when I was picking a release date, uh, the, the date that I wanted to do it coincided with a trade show that I go to every year. Uh, and that trade show is put on by an organization called NCSL International. It's the NCSL Workshop and Symposium. I'm amazed at how many people that I work with aren't really familiar with NCSL and what they do. They're a fantastic organization. They not only have worldwide reach, but they also have local reach as well. They have local chapter meetings. And I, I don't know why it didn't occur to me earlier, but I thought this would be a great place and a great opportunity to have maybe the first episode of Calibration TV. So I contacted a few people from NCSL. They were wonderful to work with, very accommodating. And in fact, they agreed to do a few interviews and tell you a little bit about NCSL and what they do. So this year, the show was from St. Paul, Minnesota. It was called Measurement Accuracy and the Impact on Society. And check this out. Hello, I'm here with Roger Burton, who is president of NCSL International. We're here at the NCSL International Workshop and Symposium, which is in St. Paul, Minnesota this year. Roger, thank you very much for thank being you. on the first episode of Calibration TV. Okay. 
Can you, for viewers who would be watching this, and there are, there are many, even in my territory where I am, who aren't familiar with NCSL, can you just tell me a bit about what the organization is? Sure. NCSL International is a professional technical organization. Our vision is to be the world's recognized expert for measurement science and information. And our uh, membership entails a broad range of uh, people, every, every, everyone from the uh, International Bureau of Standards down to the bench level technologists. Mm -hmm. So at a workshop and symposium like this, what I've always been amazed at is, as you said, you can walk around and see people that work in instrument shops, uh, corporate laboratories, but you can also, at the next booth, see somebody from NIST and go ask them a question, uh, a metrological question. If you yes, that, that's one of the, uh, the strengths of our organization is, is the technical expertise that we have. We have participation from the International Bureau of Standards. We have several national metrology institutes uh, represented here, including NIST in this country, SANAM in Mexico, uh, NRC in Canada, and, and several others. So it's, it's a great, great source of information and just a, a broad, broad range of information available. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the work of the volunteers for NCSL International. I'm amazed at the size and complexity of the events and how few actually direct employees there are for NCSL International. Yes, volunteers are the heart and soul of NCSL International. We do have a, a, a business office located in Boulder, Colorado with a few paid staff but the bulk of the organization is driven by volunteers. And that starts at the top. We have a board of directors with, with 18 voting members on the board. These are all volunteer positions. Then we have local and regional section coordinators that organize local meetings. We also have volunteers that organize the annual uh, workshop and symposium, as well as a technical exchange we offer uh, once a year in January or February. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give a shout out to my local coordinator who is Tim Cook uh, in Massachusetts. He does a fantastic job and has for many years. Tim, thank you for all your hard work on putting together our local chapter meetings. It's a great organization. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So thank you to Roger for being on the show. Really appreciate that. Uh, my first remote, my first remote location for Calibration TV, so that's cool. I mentioned that I've been going to the NCSL show since the, the mid-1990s, but most of my involvement has been in the exhibitor section of the show. But there are so many different parts to the NCSL workshop and symposium. So I did an interview with Paul Packabush. He's in charge of the conference, and uh, here's an interview with him. I'm here with Paul Packabush, who is the vice president of conference for NCSL International. Yes, sir. Correct. Um, Paul, thank you very much. You're kind of the host, so thank you very much yeah. for having us here. I've been coming to the NCSL International Workshop and Symposium for many years, and most of my involvement is with the exhibitor section, mm -hmm. which is kind of where we are right now. But there's so many more facets to a workshop and symposium. Can you tell me about the different parts, the different moving parts of this uh, organization? Sure, you're correct. There's a lot of things that we try to put together for the attendees and the exhibitors. I mean, at the very beginning, we make sure that we have some very good hands-on training and tutorials. So we offer a number of days of opportunity to grow participant skills with uh, training classes, with opportunities to actually perform hands-on tasks to improve their skills. Um, through the volunteerism we have, there is a lot of work that is done to find technical presentations and technical topics afterwards that cover everything from uh, scientists who work in measurement science down to the technicians who perform the bench level work. So that is a strong part of our technical symposium. And then you mentioned before the exhibitor area that we're currently in. Um, we also want to make sure that we have an opportunity to take our attendees and exhibitors and link them together so that they both uh, experience a lot of value from being in the symposium. So the exhibitors are also a very big part, and we need to make sure that we give them the right opportunities to interact. Um, and then outside of that, we have a number of keynote presentations that we have to do, and we need to bring in some very topical individuals to talk about things that are of value to the organization, but also very current. Um, and that is another facet that spends quite a bit of time making sure that we add value to everyone who attends. Mm -hmm. So an attendee that comes here, they can get training, in-depth training, mm -hmm. for several days on fundamentals of all different metrological uh, elements. Right. They can listen to uh, 
top people, national metrological institutes give papers about new research they're mm -hmm. doing, and then they can come down to the exhibit area and they can see the latest products that these exhibitors are, uh, are rolling out. That's right, and we also want to have some fun, so we have some events in the evening as well, because we want to make sure that you know people get a little bit of a break after spending a full day of absorbing a lot of technical topics. Right. As a volunteer organization, what's really important to us is to make sure that people who are doing the research, people that are involved in measurement science, actually bring material to this symposium to educate the rest of our members on. Uh, so the content that's generated for the symposium is actually supplied by our members. We have a very uh, strong process to reach out for abstracts, to reach out for papers, and it's a great opportunity for the people who care about the field that we're in to be able to bring their knowledge to the rest of the individuals in the membership. Um, so it's very important for us to get people to submit papers, to have people come and do the presentation, because not only does it build their career and their capabilities, but it also helps share it with the rest of our membership. Right. Another aspect of a volunteer organization is to make sure that we recognize the people who are putting in the effort to make this organization successful. Um, so we really want to make sure that we support individuals that uh, support the organization. And from that perspective, every year at this symposium, we have a number of events to openly recognize those individuals in public forums. And we also supply both awards and some monetary support for these individuals as well so that we can make sure that our membership as a whole uh, not only has an opportunity to be engaged, but we can then go back and thank them for their engagement. And from a volunteer organization, that's a very important aspect to keep in mind. So many thanks to Paul for being on the uh, first episode of Calibration TV. Uh, later on, I've got another interview that talks about some of the local aspects of NCSL and how you can get involved. But I wanted to also bring you some uh, equipment, some of the new equipment that was demonstrated and released out at the NCSL show. So, uh, first product is from Fluke Calibration. They unveiled a new humidity calibrator called the 5128A or the Rapid Cal. And this is kind of new for Fluke. They've never really, uh, they've never produced their own humidity calibrator. They have a humidity measurement device called the Duke or the Duke K that's a hygrometer that measures uh, RH and temperature. But this is really their first calibrator for humidity. So check this out. So I'm here with Greg Secord. He is the business unit manager for Fluke Calibrations temperature group. Is that That's right? right? Business unit manager, fluke temperature. And group. now humidity. And now humidity. So this is a new product here at the NCSL show. We're in the fluke booth, the uh, massive city we call the fluke calibration booth at the NCSL show. And this is a new humidity calibrator from fluke. So Greg, tell me a little bit about it. All right. It's our first humidity calibrator ever. Yeah. Uh, it's called the 5128. We call it the rapid cal. So uh, as name. you can imagine, it's built for speed. Um, first of all, it's a, it's a mixing flow humidity generator, which means it takes a wet stream of gas coming from a humidifier and a dry stream of gas coming through a desiccant, mixes it together and quickly generates uh, humidity so you can do calibrations. Also controls temperature up to 50 degrees C, okay. so you can do humidity and temperature points. So who is it for? Who is it? Who do you envision buying this or using this unit? Well, lots of different industries. You know, mainly the applications are around uh, preventing spoilage of things like food products or pharmaceutical products. Uh, you have tons of different sensors out there. Here's a couple of examples. In the 2 to 3 percent accuracy range in humidity, you have multiple different small data loggers around. Some are wall mounted and some uh, move around and go through processes. And lots of probes. I'll take this one out for a moment to show you. Probes with a uh, a long end that can be inserted into the chamber. So mm -hmm. we've got a capacity of up to five, five probes at a time can be inserted through here, sealed and calibrated inside the chamber. Or as an alternative, you can take a, an accessory clear door that we have, comes with yep. a shelf, and that can be set inside the chamber so you can take loggers like these and put them directly Just inside. Just put them right inside. Stack them inside, several of them at a time, I guess, if the chamber's big yeah, enough. as many as you can fit. You've got a, a little over, about a one liter volume inside, and so you could probably fit a couple of these at a time, depending on the size of what you have. You have a, a mixing insert that helps the flow uh, circulate in there properly. If you take that out, you can even fit more of these in there. So depending on your application, you can change that volume and increase it. All right. So somewhere in here, there must be some kind of desiccant dryer to give you the dry air stream. Exactly. Where do you access that? Is that what this is? Yeah, a lot of units you see uh, would have an external desiccant. You can kind of see it on the back or the side of the unit. In this unit, it's right here on the front. You can access it by uh, turning this knob here and pulling the desiccant out. 
you'll get an indication on the unit if, uh, if it needs to be changed based on its operation. It can kind of tell if you uh, have a low desiccant or a consumed desiccant where you need to change it, and it will give you a warning on the screen. The desiccant chamber looks kind of like this, and you can take a look outside, and the indicator here by color will tell you whether it has been consumed and needs to be changed out. Nice. So is it released already? Is it soon to be released? When it's is it available? Soon to be released. We expect in about two months, but since we had the NCSL show here, we wanted to get it out in front of people and, cool. and get them ready. So by the end of September, we accept it. Right. expect to have the product out. Can you give me an approximate price, a ballpark price, or don't you know yet? In the U.S., it should be between twenty-six and twenty-seven thousand dollars. Cool. All right. um, you know, a couple other things we wanted to bring to the uh, product and differentiate ourselves is to bring fluke metrology to kind of an industrial humidity calibrations. Uh, a lot of times, you can't get a good, reliable um, uh, specification and understanding of what kind of uniformity you have in a chamber, for example. And we've done a lot of testing to understand, you know, what's the um, hole to hole uniformity and the uniformity throughout the entire operating cavity here. So we have, you know, a, a really well specified uh, humidity and temperature uniformity and stability specifications. Mm -hmm. We ship each one with an accredi accredited calibration at nice. the Utah facility, the same facility that made heart products for many years. And uh, that's about it. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate right. the sneak peek. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Good to see you. Good to see you. So thanks to Greg for taking the time out of the show to, uh, to be on Calibration TV. Appreciate that. Here are some more detailed specifications on the 5128A. Uh, humidity uncertainty is plus or minus 1%. That's over the bulk of the range of the calibrator from 7 to 80% RH. Up in the higher areas from 80 to 95, I think the number goes up to 1.25% RH accuracy uncertainty, but still a very good number. Uh, temperature uncertainty, plus or minus two-tenths of a degree. And all important, when you have a calibrator like this, you have to have good stability of temperature and humidity as well. So uh, plus or minus 0.2% RH stability and temperature stability of a tenth of a degree. Uh, very good specifications. So I have two more great products that I want to show you and also one more interview with someone else from NCSL. But honestly, I think it's too much content for one episode. I think... Uh, I don't know that people's attention spans for calibration and tests will last 30 minutes. So I've decided to split this episode in two, and next week I'll release the second half uh, of episode one. Um, one of the products is amazing. It's a new pressure calibrator. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. We've got a lot of detail as well as a demonstration. So please, I hope you'll come back for part two of Calibration TV, the very first episode. Uh, also, I'll be giving away some swag. I've got some Fluke beverage coolers. I think I've got four or five of these, and depending on how many viewers I have, I might not have four or five viewers, so maybe you're guaranteed to get one. So uh, please tune back for that. The best way to keep updated on new episodes is to connect with me on social media. So here are my Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn um, information so that you can connect with me. Uh, also, I've got a new website, calibrationtv.com. If, uh, if you go to that website and click on the Calibration TV banner at the top, it'll take you right to all the episodes of Calibration TV. If you'd like to connect the old-fashioned way, yes, you can still email me. My email address is dan at hallassociates.net. And believe it or not, you can even call me on the telephone. Telephone number is 860-572-0111. So if you're interested in any of the equipment you see on Calibration TV, feel free to contact me for a quote, uh, email, phone call. Um, happy to discuss your application with you and see if I might have some solutions for you. I think that wraps it up for the first half of the first episode of Calibration TV. Please connect with me on social media and look for episode part two next week. Thank you very much.